the major challenge facing embryonic stem cell biologists today is to produce enough cells that can be used ultimately in a clinical setting. It's very easy to grow these cells, the embryonic stem cells, in a dish, but to get them to differentiate to the desired cell type is, a, is an immense hurdle uh, right now. You go from amorphous mass of cells just growing in a dish to something that is beating or has neurons in it. I mean, this is, this is just a fabulous question. It's basically the essence of what makes a body a body. So embryonic stem cells, uh, as you know, can make all the tissues in our bodies. Uh, but as they are in the dish, right, uh, as we culture them, they're very, very primitive cells. So we have to take these cells through development to produce the various cell types that we would ultimately want for clinical applications. The undifferentiated stem cells themselves don't have the differentiated characteristics of the final tissue that you'd like to have. Let's say, for instance, that someone has a heart attack, an infarct, and you would like to replace the cardiomyocytes, the heart muscle cells that are lost due to damage. You can't just put a stem cell into the heart and expect the heart to provide signals to that early cell to make it into a heart muscle cell. Rather, that embryonic stem cell is expecting to see signals like what would exist in a very early embryo to push it down one lineage or another to make heart muscle cells, to make pancreatic beta cells, or neurons. So stem cell biologists are applying the knowledge that we've gained over the last 100 or 120 years in classical embryology to take those signals that have been identified and then apply those to the embryonic stem cells. Another approach is quite different. Uh, we're adopting techniques from drug discovery where we're screening very large libraries of small molecules, drug-like molecules, in order to find molecules that can push the cells from one step to the next in cardiomyocyte differentiation. It's also possible that some of these molecules can be useful themselves as drugs. What we'd like to do would be to stimulate the endogenous stem cells to differentiate into cardiomyocytes. Normally, that's an extremely inefficient process. There are very few of these cells, but perhaps if we had the right drugs, we could stimulate the number of those cells and then push them along. So embryonic stem cells could then be tools for drug discovery. Typically in a screen, we're screening about 200,000 compounds. That's 200,000 individual wells in, in multi-well dishes that we screen. Uh, we have a capacity of screening about a half million compounds a day, given our current robotics. I started working with mouse embryonic stem cells in 1985, and we could take those cells and aggregate them into clusters, and we would see beating cardiomyocytes, but we didn't have any idea what to add to make that process more efficient. Everyone knew that you could make these cells. What we didn't know is how to do it. Now, we're still not there, but we're, an awful, we're awfully close at this point because you can go through these large screens, you can adapt the embryology, you can find the molecules that uh, will take you from the embryonic stem cell to the differentiated tissue. That's not to say we're going to be able to do it in large numbers for clinical application next year, but we know that it's possible to do this. It might take a decade, might take longer, but it will be possible.